I'm with uh, Trudy Thompson of Bricks and Bread at the end of uh, RSA Social Entrepreneurs Breakfast, where we've been talking about how social entrepreneurs can use social media, but also how RSA fellows can use it to build their own networks. Trudy, what's your tips? Well, first of all, you've got to be a good networker and uh, get on with people um, for a start, because uh, the one thing I notice is how many people will start uh, controversial questions in a network situation and put people's backs up so uh, the first thing is probably uh, be friendly and what if uh, you achieved for bricks and bread we had some great stories from you about uh, growing towards 10,000 followers and um, a lot of your life actually being led online well in terms of uh, bricks and bread it's, it's got a hub and uh, people are actively encouraged to join the network and uh, share skills for free um, and also tap into our resources as a, as a business. Um, we have physical premises and, and we provide space for people to run their business or run events. But um, on, in terms of sharing knowledge and information and news, I've used Twitter as a way to really share the essence of what I'm about and what Bricks and Bread's about and, and what we're doing. Um, and what I've tended to find is by connecting up all of my social networks, including LinkedIn and Facebook and Twitter, and keeping our website updated by the Twitter feed, by just doing Twitter, I've been able to grow not just 10,000 people following us on Twitter, but over 65,000 connected to me personally on LinkedIn. So it's become a very powerful network. If I send one message out, it goes a long way. So you've got a kind of physical presence. Uh, you've got a website, so that's two hubs. And then um, you're on Twitter. So you are a network. So could we build RSA networks from joining up lots of other networkers like you? Yeah, I mean, the, the successful people on Twitter tend to be seeking other successful people on Twitter who have the attitude of sharing because it's all very well having a huge network but it's all very well having people following you but if you don't share that or communicate with people and the RSA Twitter feed is a classic one for that because there's plenty of times when I retweet it or I, I want to re find out more information and ask a question and I get nothing back and as a result, then I get bored. So we're talking about sharing behaviour here rather than just a Twitter tool or whatever. Um, so any more tips about what it takes to be a sharer? Can anybody do it? Or are you finding particular styles and types and personalities are more sharing than others? Well, I, I like in uh, using Twitter well, as I said earlier in the meeting, to you're either a market trader who is shouting out, you know, pound of apples for a pound and keep promoting your business or you're someone who is like at a party you you gravitate towards the more popular people you gravitate to the people who've got more interesting stories the raconteurs you're, you're more likely to talk to people who are quiet in a corner if you're quiet in the corner sort of person and you can replicate that stuff on twitter it doesn't matter what style you are there'll always be someone who's interested in listening but it's how well you then feed back with people and I think that's one thing about building networks. You can't just build followers. You've got to interact. And just finally, um, I think you offered to run a two-hour session for um, social entrepreneurs and other people. How's that going to work? What do you do? Well, every Thursday at Bricks and Bread, I already run, um, not just for the people I mentor, but anyone that books into it, a Twitter training and social media session. Uh, it's a two and a half hour session and it gets people up and running and it's really about what voice to use rather than the physical click this, click that and that's how you tweet. Um, so I would run exactly the same session. I do it every week and I've, I've been doing it every week for months now so I've got it down to quite a, a fine art. It really takes two hours and people then walk away mind blown by what they can actually do with the thing. Because it isn't just about what you say, it's about what research tool it actually is valuable for.